Well, 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 we are going to answer the exercise about use it to and to be used to. Mm -hmm. Use it to, in a very good translation, uh, gave uh, from the teacher. Mm. When you are acostumava, mm -hmm. acostumado a, mm -hmm. aliás, acostumava se mm -hmm. a alguma coisa. Mm -hmm. You to be used to when you are. When, uh, the translation is when, uh, when you está acostumada a alguma coisa. Perfect. That's it. For example, nice. when you uh, are used are used to drive. You very are good. a very good driver. <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly it. So it's then something that you want. You to decide. Mm -hmm. What? What do I decide? The beginning of the, the correction. Let's go with letter A. <laughs> letter A? Go ahead. You ask me and I answer. And I yes. hope I am correct. I think you are. I think you are. I'm not I'm not worried about your I'm not worried, worried about... because sometimes a little confused. Go ahead. Okay, so let's begin here. Letter A. Uh, don't worry, nothing will happen to your car. I am used to drive. Am used to driving. Yes. Estou acostumado a dirigir. Né? Yes. Eu poderia dizer, se eu dissesse, I used to drive, tá errado? Errado não. Né? Semanticamente, gramaticamente, tá certo. Agora sim. But there isn't quero... the best answer, I think so. Eu não vou dar meu carro para alguém que costumava dirigir e não dirige mais. Peraí, quando foi a primeira vez que você pegou no carro? Ah, I don't know. Isha, you, uh, you wouldn't atrever-se. You wouldn't dare. Olha o dare que a gente vai falar. Ah, yes. <laughs> you, you wouldn't dare to lend me your car. <laughs> It's only six years that I don't drive car. Maybe we we can talk about that. We can we can discuss. We Thank can discuss. <laughs> um, letter C because we have A B C D. So let us see. When I was younger, I am used to exercise. Used, used to, it to exercise. Used to exercise. Yeah. Right, because it's in the past. It's something I used to do that I don't do anymore. Yes. Letter E, he knows Cindy well. They, blank, 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 to the same school as children. Use it to go. They used to go. A regrinha básica aí, gente, okay? Whenever I'm talking about something in the past, right? Something that happened when I was a kid, Uh, sometime in the past, when I was younger. Uh, Se, si, Marcelo, porque a atividade aí, tipo, a A é a pergunta, B é a resposta. Pode ser no Marcelo. Então, tipo, a B é a resposta, e a C é a pergunta, B é a resposta, então, tipo, é pulando A, C, E, G, I. Esse exercício é um pouquinho diferente, Marcelo, porque ele dá uma Exato. letra A, vou, por exemplo, é hum. a frase que você tem que corrigir. Aí na letra B é a resposta que você tem que dar. Exactly. exactly. Entendeu? Ok, you're welcome. <laughs> Go ahead, no teacher. Letter G. This post office, blank, 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 much better service. Is used to having. Nesse caso aqui, ó, used to have. Ele costumava ter. Até porque um, um, você não pode ter um, um post office estar acostumado. Não é uma pessoa que se acostuma. Tá, então, used... Professor, não entendi. Eu entendi oh. assim, que é um correio uhum. que costuma é, oferecer um bom serviço, não que era acostumado a oferecer um bom serviço, porque senão hoje ele não oferece mais. 
Essa é a ideia. Então, ele costumava. Até porque, pessoal, acho que acontece. Um correio, um escritório de postal, ele não pode estar acostumado. Essa, essa, essa construção aí, to be used to, ela só funciona com pessoas, com seres vivos. Ah, ok. Tá? Ok, teacher. Você pode dizer, ó, se for presente, no sentido que a senhora está pensando, a gente poderia dizer, ó, this post office usually has much better ah, service. Ah, ok, ok, né? ok. Seria nesse Perfeito. sentido aí que a senhora está pensando. Então, assim, ele não pode estar yes. acostumado com uma pessoa. Uh, letter I. I'm going to Canada by myself. I am used to traveling. I'm used to traveling on my own. Tá errado você botar used to travel? Não necessariamente. Você costumava viajar, não viaja mais, mas você ainda tem as habilidades, porque não? Você pode tá estar certo. querendo fazer esse argumento. Então, errado, errado, errado não está, mas a preferível aí é letter J. I am used okay. to traveling. Teacher, you put yes. two T. Okay. Removed it, removed it. <laughs> I saw it. Yes. Very well. No problem, teacher. <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. Olha só, fazia tempo que a gente não fazia uma dessa. Complete with verbs from the box in the correct form. Aqui eu não consegui responder todas, não, mas go ahead. Let's, let's try. Let's see what's going on here. So, letter A. Don't forget to blank blank me. It's a famous song by Bee Gees. Perfect. Remember, I sent the, the, the song to yes. you. Yes, that was so good. I was like, Miss Fatima did the homework. <laughs> Don't forget to My remember God. me. Is a song by the Bee Gees. Perfect. Uh, letter B, some banks. Blank, 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 their customers. Recebi uma visão, ó, do futuro <risos> sobre essa frase aí. Tá? Ó, ó, ó a dica aqui, hein? Olhem no meu olho. Estão sentindo aí. Use a... the tool, teacher. Uh, some banks, vai ser aqui, hein? Exploit yes. their customers. My teacher, I put exploit. Uh -huh. uh, é, é, but I put another one. Let me see if I understand my letter. Let me see. Let me see. Tem algumas aí. Eu botei aqui, professor. Teacher, Oi. I could use cuddle. Então, no aí é. De abraçar, cumprimentar. Hum, bom, bancos não fazem isso, né? O banco é, uma, é, um, é um prédio. É... Você poderia usar no sentido tipo, ah, que eles acolhem, né? Que eles dão um bom isso. serviço. Aí eu pergunto assim, que banco é esse? Porque o meu não faz isso, não. <risos> so they know, teacher. <risos> tá? Nesse caso aí, a gente puxa meio para a realidade. A maioria dos bancos, você acha que eles né, acolhem os usuários ou que eles exploram se você não pagar? Eles falam, não, tá tudo Explora. bem, você pode pagar. Meu Deus. Foi minha primeira opção. Pois é, né? É aquela velha história, você vai pro cheque especial porque já não tem dinheiro, aí eles cobram em cima do que você não tem, e aí você tem que pagar mais caro ainda, eu fico, rapaz, não tem dinheiro nem oh, pra pagar, você tem que pagar de tudo. Tem dessas. Letter G, she is blank, 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 because her parents give, não tem S, Pois é, o Marcelo aí, deixa ele pagar o um empréstimo para ver se o banco lhe abraça. Onde é que não tem S, professor? No Gives? No Gives, porque está aí, ó, there. Mas eu dou parents. Parents, é plural. it's plural, não tem S. Então, she I is... I didn't do this, teacher. Spoiled. Ela é mimada. She is spoiled. Ah, eu pensei assim. no explorar, professor, por isso que eu não botei. Então, aqui é spoiled, tá? Ela é mimada. Porque os pais dão tudo o que ela quer. Pode um negócio desse? Ex, pode. Julia Roberts. Peraí, meu teacher, peraí. Mimar. Mimar. Ok, teacher. Julia Roberts, blank, 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 me of my wife. Reminds me. 
Reminds me. Olha o Szinho aí, tem que botar na forma correta, hein? No tempo correto, yes. no presente. Ela me lembra da minha esposa. Letter E. The weather is blank, 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 today. Brighton. The weather is. This is very weird. Eu vou dizer, eu vou dizer que seria, por causa do tenho I, seria brightening. Tá? Está clareando. Right. Ele botou o brighten, que é o verbo. Se fosse bright, não era verbo, era substantivo. Tá, um, tá um okay. pouco estranho isso aí. Tá um pouco estranho isso aí. Eu pensei no sentido de que o tempo estava bom, estava ensolarado, estava uhum. bonito. Nesse caso, eu acho que não seria. Minha resposta foi essa. Não seria brighten, seria bright. Brighten é o verbo. Por isso que eu botei o ING. Certo. Se eu disser que o tempo está claro, está brilhante, seria the weather is bright. Né? No caso aí, não foi o que ele colocou. Uh, letter F. It's good to, blank, 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 in bed with a good book. This one I didn't do. Cuddle. It's good to cuddle up in bed with a good book. Ficar quietinho, ó, agasalhadinho, bonitinho na cama com um bom livro. Num dia frio, talvez, mas nesse calor tá até difícil. Letter G. Tudo que eu queria... Nesse caso, Peter, hum? cada what is the the, a very good translation? A very good translation, Miss Fátima, não vai ter. Por quê? Porque Carol vem de abraço, mas também significa ficar Isso. aconchegado, ficar com né, um cantinho ah. ali. Ok. Como, como diz essa frase, ó, tudo que eu queria, Miss Fátima, era um dia frio, um bom lugar para ler um livro e o pensamento lá em você. Ah, eu não, para ficar debaixo do mais dedrão. <risos> Mas é o que ele está dizendo aí, ó, ficar debaixo do dedrão, lendo um livrinho, num dia frio. Fez! Uh, uh, Jean, the student's behavior was blank, 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 all the teachers. Problem was troubling. Troubled? Troubled. Troubling, né? Porque a gente já botou to be aí, né? Was yes. troubling all the teachers. Problem. É isso aí. Perfect. Ok, Eu ok. Eu preciso dar mais isso. Ok. Very well. Let's go ahead to today's lesson. I think we missed speak up from last lesson. Page 111 is speak up. Very, very good. In that case, let's go on ahead with speak up. Let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. Speak up. Ms. Fatima, it's you and me, number one. How can we let her know we are here? I will stop in front of her house and honk. Stop in front of her house and honk. Boop, boop. Very good. Number two, Ms. Fajma, I think my hair has grown so fast. It's about the time you had a haircut. No, no, teacher. no, no. no, no, no. You are, you, <laughs> you, you aren't allowed to cut your hair. It's right here. It's just, it's just packed up. It's just packed away. It's just hidden. It's right here. Uh, number three. He thinks it's impossible to win. Is he going to throw in the tower? Is he going to throw in the town? Ele vai jogar a toalha? Será, professor? Será, professor? Oi, Number four. How can I keep up with the Joneses, Miss Fatima? You have to own a limousine. You have to own a limousine. Só se for, man. Number five. It seems everything... The gasoline, I would cry a lot. Pois é, pois é, exactly. Botar, um, botar uh, gás, gás natural, calque. Puts. Number, number four. No, number five. Miss Fatima, it seems everything is out of control. 
Take action instead of mourning. Take action instead of mourning. Tome ação. Vá em frente ao invés de ficar reclamando. Né? Vá lá fazer. Oh, ficar fazer. chorar me engano pelos cantos. Number six. What is this noise? The audience is roaring. Né? Aquele barulho de plateia. Né? The audience is yes. roaring. Number Number seven, Miss Fatima. Can you balance a football? I can balance a football on my head. Oh, that's that's an interesting skill to have. <laughs> Number eight. Are are they sailing to the south? They are sailing to the west. They are good. Number nine. It's too windy today. I love to see the trees swaying in the wind. Me too. Me too. Number 10. Uh, did they talk until late? They talked until sunrise. Wow. That's, I miss doing that. I miss talking until the sunrise. Eu já teria dormido. <laughs> Number 11. Miss Fatima, I'm beat. You do look weary. Mm -hmm. Weary? Weary. Weary. Weary is the same as tired. Oh, yes. Number 12. Miss Fatima, do you need thick or fine paper? We need a fine paper. Very good. Uh, next, 13. Why do you feel guilty? I feel good for taking the money. Oh, you took the money. Number 14, what is a major concern in big cities? Traffic is a constant concern in big cities. True story. Number 15, I am concerned about you. I, appreci I appreciate your concern. Number 16, uh, I'm stressed out. I can't take it anymore. I think you're ready for a vacation. I think we all are. <laughs> I think we are all ready for oh, a vacation. Me leva, Miss Fatima. Ai, seria um prazer, professor. Me leva. <laughs> Uh, let's go to listening and talking. Let's see here. And we are talking about a vacation. Oh wow. Let's let's just pay attention and listen and see how much we can understand. Let me broadcast. Here we go. Ready for a vacation. Let's go. Book 3, Lesson 27 Listening and Talking Ready for a Vacation Alfred is not simply a hard worker. He is a real workaholic. He even feels guilty when he's not working. For him, the drive to achieve is so compelling that his job is almost more important than other areas of his life, such as family, friends, leisure, and even health. But he just can't take it anymore. Fortunately, his wife has convinced him to take a break from work. I'm tired of business meetings, telephones ringing, appointments, late hours. Take it easy and work less, Alfred. I've had enough of headaches, bills to pay, errands to run, and keeping up with the Joneses. Sometimes I even feel like throwing in the towel. I think you're ready for a vacation. Just sit back for a moment and imagine Miami's white beaches covered with sand as fine as powder, swaying palm trees, the breeze, swimming, sailing, lying in the sun. 
trying out the restaurant with their gastronomic delights, brilliant sunrises and sunsets that will take our breath away. All the comforts of a top-of-the-line resort. That'd really be a perfect vacation. It's about time now I took a break from work. Let's look for a travel agency. They have the most perfect vacation packages for us. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, I have a comment because I remember this text from the last book. This text was changed a little bit because uh, before it was his wife, it used to be his friend and his friend said all of that. Then, oh, you're ready for a vacation, let's go. And then when he says, yes, I think I'm ready for a vacation. We need to go, it's perfect. Then the friend goes, you're in, you're in luck because I am a sales, a travel agency salesman. So the friend was selling him a vacation package. But this time it's only his wife. His wife wants them to go on a vacation, a very nice vacation. I think Mr. Miss Alfred mm -hmm. doesn't want to go on vacation, mm -hmm. but his wife, yes. <laughs> yeah, she's she's. I think she's more ready than he is. Although it seems like he is pretty tired. Business meetings, telephones yes. ringing, appointments, late hours. I would be tired too. Working a corporate job can be very very exhausting. Very well, very well. Uh, and then there's a question at the top there in the green rectangle. Why do we need a vacation? Why? Why do we need a vacation? Why? Let me Why? try here. In a simple answer, it's because we need to rest from work, mm -hmm. from school, mm -hmm. and we have some time to spend together with our family and friends. Very good. Perfect, perfect answer. That's Thank you, exactly you. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. That's exactly it, Ms. Fox. Ai, professor, vou sentir falta das suas aulas. <laughs> Thank oh, you my so gosh. much. Um, so, number one, have you ever taken a package tour? Yes, did teacher. You, did you I have it. Store? Me too. Me too. I like it. It's very, it was very good. Like it's usually cheaper, right? You already have all the script for the trip. You already know where you're going. You yes. don't have to find stuff out by yourself. It, it, depending on what you're looking for, it could be a very good idea to take a package tour. I took a package tour twice. Twice? Where twice. to? Where to? Uh, first one, it was to Russia and the Scandinavian region. Okay, nice, nice. And the other one, it was, it was France, England, and uh, Amsterdam. Nice. <laughs> it was fantastic. Nice, I can only imagine. Very no good. problem, no, everything <laughs> was good. Very well. Uh, moving on to number two. Do you prefer winter vacations or summer vacations? Teacher, I prefer both. It depends <laughs> on the place or country that I want to visit. Because each, each season <laughs> has its own build. Perfect. Very nice, Ms. Fátima. It's a little funny because here in Brazil, if you're not traveling, right, we don't really have a lot of difference because it's always hot. Yes. If you live in the United States, then you have summer vacation, which is from June to August, kind of. I think you spend June and July on vacation. Yes. And but can summer... you see, mm -hmm. if you go to South in July, May, July, May, mm -hmm. June, July, mm -hmm. you can see a very good difference between the seasons. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I was I, I was saying more in the sense here where we live right now, but no, yes, in the I south there's a big, big difference. Absolutely. Because I think if I if I could say this, 
is an exception. Mm -hmm. Very well, yes. We don't have that big of a difference, but in some places, winter vacations look very different from summer vacations, right? Winter vacations, usually people will travel, they will go to a, a warmer country. That's usually when they come here, usually in the middle of the year, that's when the Americans, Canadians come this way because they want the warmness of, yes. of uh, the South Hemisphere. And summer vacations, they usually do a lot of outside activities. So barbecues, camping, that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I think in general, I prefer winter vacations. Just being with my friends, it's usually a little cozier, it's usually a little colder, so there's more time to be with friends. Number three, describe the best vacation you have ever had. Tisha, I can describe it hmm. because all my vacation was, to me, incredible. Mm -hmm. Here yeah. in Brazil, out of Brazil, mm -hmm. here close to Brazil, there was you no know, Argentina and Uruguay. Nice. Uruguay is a very small country. It's mm -hmm. not so small, but it's it's, but it's, it's small. It's the size. Cool. It's the size of a state, right? It's. it's Smaller yes. than some states, some Brazilian states. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know what to say because all the country, all the city has something that I love it. And it yeah. was, I would like to, to go back again. But yes, I, I will tell you that my favorite vacation was um, the first time I went to the United States, like getting on a plane and getting off the plane and going on a school bus, one of those yellow school buses. And I remember it was uh, late August, early September, I think. And uh, by that time, you know, August, September, it's summer, but it's already getting cooler. It's like the August is coming, the fall is coming. So you have a little bit of a, of a cold breeze. Was there a time or one moment you think you thought that you are a dream a little bit i and that's what I, that's where i was getting i remember i have this very very clear memory uh i was on the bus i was on the yellow bus and i asked if i could open the window and they they let me so i opened the window and i felt the breeze on my face and it was a wind like I never felt in Brazil. It was a cold wind. It was warm. And I was like, oh. My first time I? there, it was too in the winter. It was incredible. Absolutely. Oh, seeing the snow for the first time, for me, that's, that's incredible. It wasn't vacation when I saw the snow, but it was still very, very nice. <laughs> it was still very, very nice. And number four, this question right here, I am getting a vision once again that this question will be very important for your future. <laughs> number four, the good tip. Oh, okay, even though Belle got excited. What is a good tip for balancing work and family? Teacher, hmm. I really don't know, but... In your vacation or during the time that you are working, you promise to your family that in vacation you are going to travel. Mm -hmm. It's one way mm -hmm. to balance. That, yes, you can Good. balance your work with your family. For example, my father worked from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And when he arrived home, all the time we are fight because we can't see. Sometimes we could see him in the morning. Yes. Because he loved to have breakfast with all the family together, mm -hmm. or only in the end of the day. But he promised us that in the weekend, 
Mm-hmm. Who, he would take us to or Hidden Beach or mm-hmm. Santos uh, Playa do Forte Beach. Very good. And we all six at that time six son and uh, and I as a girl mm-hmm. was anxious mm-hmm. that uh, Sunday comes. Very well. It was incredible. Absolutely. I would, let me see here, a tip. I would usually say the most common tip for me is don't take your work home with you. And also, don't bring your personal problems to work. Perfect. I think that's, that's a good way to separate, but also... Perfect. Uh, Separating a time to take your family out, to be in with your family is very, very important. Everybody should should have a time for work and for their family. Yes. I absolutely agree. Because in this case, you mm-hmm. can you can we can spend all the week or the weekend with your family that without no problem. Very good. That's what I think. That's what I think. Um, let's go to listening and reading practice where we will talk about noise pollution. Yes. Noise pollution. So let's again, once again, let's pay attention. Let's take a listen and uh, understand the audio and understand the text. Let's go. Boop. Wait, no, not this one. It's this one. Listening, reading, practice. Okay. And play. Book three. Lesson 27. Listening and reading practice. Noise pollution. Phones ringing incessantly. Clients arguing. Secretaries typing. Cars, buses, trucks and motorbikes roaring, sirens and honking from the traffic outside, loud voices and confusion. This is noise pollution. Your head spins, you moan and simply cannot take it anymore. Although noise pollution can have major consequences to health and has affected the lives of millions of people, it has not received as much attention as other types of pollution such as air pollution or water pollution, perhaps because we cannot see, taste, or smell it. We can take many steps to protect ourselves from the harmful effects of noise pollution. If we must be around loud sounds, we can protect our ears with hearing protection, like earplugs or earmuffs. We can also combat noise in our homes, schools, workplaces, and the community by helping strengthen laws and governmental and activists' efforts to control noise pollution. Nice, very good. Uh, This is something that I see a lot, and uh, I saw a lot of this in the United States and Canada. I don't see a lot of that in Brazil. Look at what it says there. Uh, We can combat noise uh, by helping strengthen laws and governmental and activists efforts a lot of people don't have that consciousness you know that awareness that as people we can talk to our government talk to people in the government to our mayors to our representatives to help change that kind of stuff right brazilians don't often talk about that kind of stuff But then again, we have, uh, is there anything, any confusion, anything different in this text? Anything you would like to clarify, Ms. Fashmar? Did you understand everything? Is everything okay? Everything good? No, teacher. I understand everything. I think so. Mm -hmm. Very well. They talk about uh, the pollution, Mm -hmm. not only the pollution of the air, Mm -hmm. but the pollution of the noise pollution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with well. cars, with uh, all the noises, phone, office with, uh, noises, street noises, yes. traffic, uh, all of that. Yes, yes, absolutely. honks and so on. 
and so it's about on. About good so sex. Mm -hmm. When it says your head spins, what does that mean? Your head spins. When you are yes, is you this. get you get dizzy, you get sick With because a lot of noise. Uh, this kind of things things can happen. Very good. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So the question there: What are noises, noise levels like in your town? What are the noise level like in in Natal? What do you think? I think it's very high. It's high. We have we... the same thing here: phones ring, talking mm. a lot of voice, uh, persons, not only clients, arguing. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you don't have a lot of uh, uh, secretary tapping because the computer mm -hmm. doesn't... Uh, doesn't make as much noise as a typewriter. <laughs> yes. Yesterday it was terrible. <laughs> Car, well. bus, strike and motorcycle ro roaring. Mm -hmm. Siren and honk, honk, yes. Mm -hmm. Siren, not a lot. It's not a lot. In, in bigger cities, you hear a little bit more sirens. In movies, yeah. you're always hearing uh, like a police car in the background. There's always yes. that, that sound. We don't have a lot of that here. True story. I agree. I completely agree with you, Ms. Uh Today, we are, we are flowing smoothly. Today, we are going, we're moving kind of fast, but that's okay. Let's go on to our quiz. Very well. Go ahead. Let's see here, Ms. Fajma, if you are afiada. <laughs> if you're feeling sharp today. Let's see if you're I don't feeling know. sharp. Go ahead. Number one, which famous physicist wrote the book called A Brief History of Time? Is Stephen Hawking who write a brief history of time? Oh, wait a moment, please. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because I make a little summary or summary? Summary, summary. Summary, summary. Hawking decided to put his years of groundbreaking research in theoretical physics mm -hmm. into book form. He decided to write a book about his experience. His goal, he said, was to explain how far we had come in our understanding of the universe, universe, and how humankind might be close to find a uh, Unified theory of the cosmos. Very Fantastic, old no teacher. Absolutely, I I absolutely love the work of Stephen Hawking. He did so much. I think I feel like he is the Einstein of modern times. He contributed a lot to theoretical physics, to our understanding of black holes, of the universe, and everything. He was absolutely brilliant. And to do all of that without being able to move his head, he, <laughs> without being able to move at all, he had a little bit of movement in his eye, and that was it. And he was able to do so much, so much. Yes, teacher. Uh, number two we have here, what is a potluck party? In the USA. I love this question. What is a potluck party, Ms. Fajman? I am going to tell you, and you are going to explain me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the pronunciation? Potluck. Potluck party. A potluck is a communal gathering where each guest or group contributes a different, often homemade, home made dish of food to be shared. Mm -hmm. I thought, teacher, if I understood well, it's for example, I'm going to give a party. Yeah. You have to bring a plate. 
Uhum. É isso. That's, that's what a potluck is. Is, ah, as we say in Brazil, festa americana. Perfect, <laughs> yes. Right? So, yeah. Right. You, get, you get the point for that one. What is funny for me is that in Brazil, we call that festa americana, even though not all parties are like that. Usually when you have a picnic or when you have some, uh, usually work parties sometimes have potlucks, but it's not the standard. I don't know why we say festa americana when that's not the standard for, uh, for American parties. I don't know why we say that. Okay. Yeah. Potluck, festa americana. Cada um traz o seu prato. Number three. What is the most popular sport in Japan? Teacher, I was very surprised mm -hmm. with I found out. Mm -hmm. What did you find? Baseball teacher. Yes, baseball is uh, the most popular sport in Japan. Then I wrote to hear something because I was so surprised. Yes. Even though it came from the US, mm -hmm. baseball is, of, is often jokingly referred to as Japan's national sport, mm -hmm. as it's by far the most popular in Japan. In fact, some Japanese players have a player in the MLB, Major mm -hmm. League Baseball. Mm -hmm. Professor, eu pensei em tudo, menos em baseball. <laughs> eu pensei, inclusive, que fosse aquela luta, que eles usam aquele Sumou. tipo. Sumou. Sumou. Mm -hmm. Mas eu não pensei em baseball. Exactly. Aí eu botei sumou, mas eu resolvi pesquisar. Mm -hmm. Quando eu vi beisebol, quase que eu caí para trás. Bom, vou à Well, you are not completely misguided there, because, uh, let me show here, because sumo actually was, for the longest time, sumo actually was the, the most popular. But I think from the 80s forward, uh, baseball became the most popular. But here... Sumo is still the second most popular sport in Japan. I think it just became, you know, not so popular because you need two big, big, big men to, to do sumo. And yes. I, think, uh, I think baseball is just a healthier sport, I guess, because, you know, you don't have to be such a huge person to play. <laughs> it's something kids can play. It's something everybody can kind of participate in. Uh, number four, this one is too easy. Uh, Cleopatra was the queen of what country in the first century BC? Egypt. Egypt. Extra points. Thank you, Mar teacher. <laughs> Extra points if you can tell me where she was born. <laughs> ah, good teacher. Then <laughs> let me try to read it to you. Oh. The timeline of the life of Cleopatra. Cleopatra was a queen, I gosh, mm. of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But she was not Egyptian. Mm -hmm. She was the last of the Macedonian Greek mm -hmm. dynasty that he ruled Egypt from the time of Alexander, the greatest death, death in 323 BC to about 30 BC. Then Cleopatra was a Greek, no, Macedonian Greek. Very good. <laughs> Perfect, perfect, that's it. So Cleopatra was the queen of Egypt. She was born in, a, in Alexandria, aquela cidade que tinha a yes. biblioteca que voa, né? Alexandria. A mais But, famosa do mundo inteiro. Exactly, triste, até hoje, toda vez que eu penso na biblioteca da Alexandria, eu fico triste. Uh, but she was the last in line of the Macedonian Greek dynasty. So Cleopatra, dynasty. É, dynasty. por mais que algumas pessoas adorem, é, adorem colocar como, como 
é, egípcia, negra e tal, ela na verdade era grega, macedônia Isso. negra, quer dizer, grega. Né? Então, ela era, no caso, foi a última dos macedônios aí a governar o Egito. Perfect, perfect. Number I five. Something. <laughs> I didn't answer number five okay. because I didn't understood or I didn't understand what is chin up. Chin up. Okay. So uh, first, in my book, there is a mistake. I think the C is before the chin, so it looks like this. Is your is yours okay in your book? Is it Let is it see. written okay? Like this it's is okay. how mine looks. Okay. So chin yes. up. Right? Like this. So, chin up. When do people say chin up? There are... I do you know. There are two ways that people say chin up. One of them is for exercise. You know there's an exercise where you have to... You have a thing here and then you have to go... What? This is a chin up. Seria nossa barra. What? This is a chin up. Huh? Wow. Isso é uma tina, porque o nosso queixo tem que subir acima da barra, tá? Uh, também chamado de pull-up. It's also called a pull-up. Uh, but chin-up is also used to try to cheer someone up. If, so, if a person is sad, then you go, chin-up! Your vacation is coming, chin-up! It's all gonna get better. Aí então a pessoa tá lá, ok. Chin down, very sad, and then you go chin up. Olha para cima, cabeça para cima. Sacode a poeira, vamos embora. Tá? Então, chin up seria a versão americana do nosso sacode a poeira. Sacode a poeira, muito tipo, bem. Chin up, se alegra aí, se anima aí, vamos embora. Como dizia minha tia, dá uns pulos, né? dá uns pulos, uh, e vamos embora. Sim. This one. This one, the point goes for me. <laughs> I get the point. <laughs> And number six. Okay, no problem, teacher. <laughs> number six. What yes. is paleontology? What is paleontology? Paleontology is, uh, is the scientific study of the of life of the the geologic Best that involves the analyze of plant and animal fossils, including those of microscopic size preserved in rocks. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so paleontology, very broadly put, like Ms. Fatima said so uh, specifically there, very broadly put, is the scientific study of fossils, including trees yes, fossils. and animals and microscopic life. All of that is studied through paleontology. Very good. good. Fossils. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's go on to listening for understanding. We have here a story about Jennifer. O nome dela é Jennifer. Então, Jennifer has come from a small town and is now living, is now living and working in a huge city. What three challenges has she faced since coming to a big city? So let's pay attention. Let's see what is the story of Jennifer. What has happened to her since she moved to a bigger city? Let's see here. Everybody paying attention and let's go. Book 3, Lesson 27, Listening for Understanding Jennifer has come from a small town and is now living and working in a huge city. What three challenges she has faced since coming to the city? I travel 90 minutes or more each way to and from work and it's making me sick. Long commutes contribute to higher blood pressure and less sleep and exercise. I'm certainly not the only one who's had that problem. Wow, that is that is surprisingly uh, down to earth. That is surprisingly grounded because that is very, very true. Right? 
Então, isso aqui é yes. muita gente faz. Olha só o que ela fala aí, vamos lá. Faced since coming to the city. I travel 90 minutes or more each way to and from work. She travels 90 minutes, minutes or more. 90 minutes or more each way to and from, from work. And it makes me sick. It makes her sick. Look at that. She spends around three hours a day in commute. Olha o que ela fala aí, ó. Long commutes. And it's making me sick. Long commutes contribute to higher blood pressure. Long commutes. O que, que seria o commute? I didn't understand understand this word teacher commute tá essa palavra é muito utilizada lá tá a commute o que, que seria um commute tá é, é traduzindo aí tipo comutação mas a gente usa mais seria mais parecido com o translado tá o movimento pendular todo dia de ir para o trabalho voltar ao trabalho aquele tempo é, indo e voltando do trabalho Tá? Esse translado aí de uma hora e meia, 90 minutos. That is a lot of time to be waiting every day. So a lot of people read, a lot of people uh, listen to books. These days, audiobooks have become very, uh, very popular. Some people go online, some people work on their way to work, which is just crazy to me. But yeah. Uh, Teacher, long... when I work, when I lived in Porto Alegre, mm -hmm. I spent four to five minutes to go and come back to the way I to my house yeah. every day. That's a then I time. stay in the university all day long mm -hmm. because I I I didn't feel good to come back to have lunch in mm -hmm. my house. Absolutely. And I, I spent all day long in the university. Absolutely. I can see why. It's very tiring having to spend that much time yes. just in a bus or in a car going and coming back from work. But look at what she says. Uh, it contributes to higher blood pressure. Let's see again. Long commutes contribute to higher blood pressure and less sleep and exercise. I'm certainly not the only one who's had that problem. Absolutely. Yes. So three hours, those are three hours you could be working out, you could be dancing, you could be doing an activity. So it's bad for your health. And it's also, and I can say this because I, I have read many uh, psycho, psychology papers on this, It's also bad for your mind. Being three hours just looking at people, not doing anything, it's not good for your mental health. So we should Then find ways. Then sometimes I read in the bus, mm -hmm. but one day a classmate told that wasn't good because of the balance of the bus. Yeah, it's some people have what we call a motion sickness. Yes. Some people have motion sickness. What is motion sickness? Is when you feel sick because of the movement of the bus or because of the movement of the ship. If you are in a ship or a boat, some people get sick at sea because of the movement of the ship. But usually what happens is your eye is focused on something static, something that is not moving, but your body is feeling the movement. Yes. So your body doesn't know if you're moving or not, So a lot of people get sick. I had a brother, I have a brother, who used to get very, very motion sick. He would get in the car and he would either get a book or something, but he could not read the book because he would get sick every time, every time he got sick. It happens, it happens, absolutely. All right, all right, all right. Today, Ms. Fatima, as you were the only one who actually participated, who said stuff, We are finishing up a little bit earlier. I will give you some time to go rest. And I will see you next Monday. All right? All right. Have a good weekend. Everything you good. <laughs> and I'm yes, going to do. sleep the rest of the afternoon because <laughs> I still tired. <laughs> would if I could, Miss Fatima. I would if I could. <laughs> 
Very well, very well. Less, we have less than 28. We're talking about French fries. Less than 28. We're talking about French fries. Okay, okay. Okay, teacher. Bye bye, teacher. Bye bye. See you. And thank you very much. Thank you.